guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I decorated these beautiful flower stand and bouquet cookies. I'm using my brand new bouquet cookie cutter by Shabby Designs that's perfect for spring, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, you name it. In this video, I'm going to cover all sorts of techniques like royal icing flowers and layering. So let's just jump right to it, shall we? Here's a list of everything you'll need to make these cookies and I have detailed all the specifics in the description box below. The first flower I'm going to show you how to make is a daisy and for this flower you'll need a 101 and a number 2 piping tip. It'll also be helpful to have a flower needle which you see here and a little piece of parchment paper. And for these daisies I'm actually using a 101S which is a little bit smaller than the traditional 101 piping tip but they're the same. The first thing I do is pipe a circle that's going to help keep the petals kind of standing more upright and less flat. And then with the thin part of the piping tip facing outward, I'm going to make these long loops for the petals. I use my scribe tool to fix any imperfections and then I'll go in with that yellow icing to pipe a small dot right in the center. The next flower I'm going to show you is a traditional rose and to make this flower you're going to need a 101 tip and any size round. And once again, I'm using my flower needle to help me build this flower. So first I pipe a mound of icing using that round tip. And then with the narrow portion of that piping tip facing upward, I make a loop at the top of that mound and then I create petals going around it by piping small arches for each petal. And the petal should start about halfway through the previous petal and get larger as you work your way down the flower. Once I get to the base of the flower, I will fan those petals out even more and make even larger petals. And the next flower I'm gonna show you is a peony on its side and you will also need a 101 tip and a round tip. And this flower is not too dissimilar to the rose. It's kind of done in a similar way, but on its side. So the first thing you're gonna do is pipe petals in that same arch motion um, along the bottom of that pastry needle or on top of that parchment. And then we're gonna add the center with a little bit of yellow. And then I'm gonna pipe some more petals in that same arch motion right on top of that and around the center of the flower. And again, if you need to, use your scribe tool to fix any imperfections. The next flower is one of my favorites, a chrysanthemum, and for this you will just need a number 81 tip. And once again, working on top of that uh, flower needle, I pipe a little bit of icing to help adhere that parchment. And I'm going to use my number 81 tip, which kind of looks like a C, to first create a mound similar to what we did with the rose. And then I'm just going to stamp these petals on top and then around um, to create that really kind of spiky petal look. There really isn't a whole lot of technique here. You're just going to stamp them. The longer you squeeze that piping bag, the longer the petal will be. So if you want shorter petals, then just put a little bit of pressure on your piping bag and pull out quickly to release that petal. But you're just going to keep moving around very similar to how we did with the with the rose. You just keep moving around until your chrysanthemum is as full and as big as you'd like it to be. And the last flower I'm going to show you is a drop flower, so you're going to need a number 224 or 225 tip. And for this flower, you do not need to work on a flower needle. You can do this directly on a work surface or on a cookie, but let me just show you the technique. So you're just going to press the center of that piping tip down. There's actually a little needle in the center. You're going to press that down and you're just going to twist your hand around either clockwise or counterclockwise to create those petals. You can obviously manipulate those petals as you want and you can leave them as is, or you can pipe a little dot of something in the middle, either black or yellow or white, whatever color you choose. All right, now that we know how to make some flowers, let's decorate some cookies. So the first cookie I'm gonna make is this bouquet cookie. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna just brush on some brown flood consistency icing along the back part of this paper cone that's covering the flowers, that's holding the flowers. Um, so I'm doing this on the back as well as on the bottom. So this will be the portion that's sticking behind the flowers and it's also behind the rest of the paper. So I want this to have a little bit of dimension even though it's gonna get covered up anyways. Once that dries, which will only take about five or so minutes since it's so thin, I'm gonna go right on top of it with the same icing, but I'm actually gonna flood, outline and flood the sections of the rest of the cone, of this paper cone that's holding the flowers. 
So I'm going to do this on the top portion um, that's in front of the flowers as well as on the base. And I'm going to do the base in two sections so that once again it has a little bit of dimension so it looks like one piece of paper, one edge of the paper is covering the other. So I'm going to let that dry for about 10 minutes and then go in and pipe the second. Now I can start building out the bouquet and the first thing I'm going to do is pipe these leaves in the back of the bouquet and I'm using a small leaf tip, specifically a 349 tip. You can use any tip you'd like, you can even cut a leaf tip out of your um, tip list bag if you want. And then I'm going to use a number one tip with my stiff icing to create the branches that are going to hold those yellow palm flowers. I don't know their specific name but they're super cute. And the reason I'm using a piping tip to pipe these lines instead of using a tipless bag, which I would normally do, is because I'm using the same icing to pipe not only these lines, but also um, different leaf shapes. So I can actually change out the piping tip. Because I have that cu white coupler on there, I can change out the piping tip so I can get different shapes with the same icing. So I'm using a number two tip to pipe those yellow balls of flowers, which are so cute. And now I'm going to go and fill out the rest of the leaves and for this I'm either going to use a combination of a number two piping tip or a PME number 50 ST50 piping tip which is a different type of leaf tip. Again you can use any tip you like. You can use a 349 once again. They don't have to be different shapes or you can cut one yourself. For these smaller leaves, I'm just going to use my small round tip. I think this is a number one or a number two. And I'm just going to do this pressure piped leaf. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on my pipe or on my bag. I'm squeezing a ball and then I'm dragging that out into a point to create that leaf shape. And now that the flowers that we piped earlier have had a chance to dry, I can add them to my bouquet. So first I'm just gonna peel them off of that parchment backing and I can play around with how they're gonna be arranged on that, um, in that bouquet because they're perfectly dry. So I can place them how I want, I can move them around. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna use any icing. I'm gonna just use the green icing um, because it's what I had available. I'm just gonna pipe a dollop of the green icing and then stick my dried, um, flower right on top and I'm going to put them all in place and then once I'm happy with how they're placed I will pi start piping some other leaves and flowers around it. Now I'm going to go in with my small leaf tip and add a few leaves around each of the flowers and then in the spaces where there are large gaps I'm going to add in those drop flowers that we piped earlier. So these are also fully dried so I'm going to pipe a big dollop of green or whatever icing and then I'm going to stick the flower right on top just like we did with the other ones. But since this one is kind of on top of the other flowers I'm going to need to pipe a little bit more icing. So once all the flowers are in place, then you can assess where all the gaps are remaining. And I will typically just pipe a bunch of leaves and maybe some other little drop flowers just in those gaps, um, whatever makes the most sense to fill in the space and make it look the most natural. I find that when I'm piping flowers, I don't want anything to look symmetrical or even on both sides. I don't want anything to mirror each other. So I just kind of pipe my leaves haphazardly. I don't try to pipe two leaves on each side in the exact same spot. Um, I just kind of pipe them wherever it makes the most sense. And now that I've added enough leaves and there's still some space left, I'm going to go in with a number 16 tip. This is just a simple star tip and I'm just going to dot in some other flowers just to add a little bit more filling to this bouquet. Then the last step is to add a bow to the bottom of this bouquet. I'm using a flat number 44 tip which creates a nice flat ribbon and it's perfect for creating this kind of rustic loose bow. The first step thing I do is I pipe two little strands of the bow coming out from beneath the, the loops and then I pipe the loops on either side and over that center seam I'll pipe one small ribbon. 
and use my scribe tool to tuck everything in. The actual last step is one that you won't see here and that's to add just a few stems coming out from the very bottom of the bouquet so it looks like the stems from the flowers are poking through the bottom of the paper. Now let's move on to the super cute flower stand cookie. The first thing I'm doing here is actually painting on some white flood consistency icing. I could of course actually outline and flood the cookie if I wanted to, but I didn't want to add a ton of icing on top of this cookie since I'll be adding even more on top of it later. So I'm just brushing on this flood consistency icing for a nice thin layer of white icing to be in the background of all my decoration. Once the white icing has dried, which will only take about 10 to 15 minutes, I can start piping on top of it. The first thing that I want to pipe is this tabletop where all the canisters of flowers are going to sit. I'm using brown flood consistency icing to make this kind of rectangle shape, and I need this to dry completely before I add anything else on top. Once the brown section has had a chance to dry and crust over, I can start piping all the different elements of the flower cart. I will typically just use my projector to project all of these different pieces onto my cookie and follow the projector lines. Instead, I have actually drawn those lines onto the cookie since I hate filming my projector. So now I'm just tracing the lines that I already traced from my projector. So now I'm going to go in with my black icing and outline the entire awning of this flower cart. I'm outlining the entire thing in black icing, but then I'm only going to fill in every other section so that I have a black and white awning. It's really important when you're putting black next to any other light color like white that you let the black dry completely so that it doesn't bleed into the next color. You don't want to pipe white right next to black while they're both still wet because then the black will just bleed into the white. So I'm going to let this dry while I do everything else for my flower cart. Now I'm going to pipe all the canisters that are going to hold all the flowers um, on top of this little tabletop in the flower cart. I'm using a 15 second flood consistency gray icing. I don't want it to be too thin since I'm only working in small sections. Um, so I think flood, a 15 second flood is the perfect consistency icing for the small section. Next, I'm going to pipe the legs and the wheel of the base of this flower cart, and I'm using that black. This is more of a piping consistency. It's somewhere between a piping and a flood consistency icing. I didn't want something too thin because it was going to be flooding small sections and also used for details like the wheel and the legs. So this is probably a 30 second consistency icing so that it can kind of function as both a piping consistency and a flood consistency icing. Now let's add some flowers in these canisters. I'm going to pipe all of the stems first and then add the actual flowers later. So I'm going to use a mixture of my dark green and my light green using a number one piping tip attached to that coupler. I'm going to alternate the light green and the dark green in different canisters, not so that they're perfectly even, but just so that they, you know, are all dark green or all light green. For this center uh, canister of stems, I'm adding little leaves on top. So I'm just dragging that piping tip outward, putting a little bit of pressure to make a dot and then dragging it outward to create a little. And for this outer batch of stems, I'm going to have these um, stems kind of go up and over the top of this canister and really fill out the edge of that cookie. I'm also going to do the same on the other side too. So this kind of frames that flower stand. And with our stems in place, we can start adding flowers. I'm going to add little red kind of tulip looking flowers by using that same motion we did with the leaves by pressing and making a dot of icing and then pulling upward. For the ones on the edge, I'm going to use my number 16 star tip and just pipe little dots, little stars to make these flowers. I'm using a number 14 tip, which is slightly smaller. 
in that purple color to make a smaller little flower. And then on the end, I'm gonna use my number one piping tip in that yellow to make those yellow kind of ball flowers. And again, still don't know what they're called, um, but I just think they're so cute and it adds a ton of color. And the last thing that's left to do is to fill in the rest of this awning with the white icing. Now that the black has had a significant chance to dry, it shouldn't bleed into our white icing any longer. Although I do recommend adding white food coloring to your white icing to make sure that dark colors don't bleed into it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see what you make. I can't wait to see all of your beautiful bouquets and flower stands. I hope you enjoy this cookie cutter that I collaborated with with Shea B. And if you want to see more cookie decorating videos, hit subscribe below.